Good afternoon, everybody. Last week, we made an introduction. What was the introduction about? Last week, it was not fully about linear algebra. We talked about what is a scientific approach in finding solutions to problems. So as an example, we discussed the problem of finding the roots of second order equations. And we said that in a special case, we know how to solve it very easily. And we generalized that. We said, how can we reduce the general case into the special case and by making some simple transformation? <coughs> Afterwards, of course, we obtained the formula that everybody knows, right? So in high school, you learned how to find the roots of second order polynomial. And we said, how about third order polynomial? How can we find the roots of third order polynomial? And again, in a special case, we developed a solution, which was not very easy, even for the special case, finding the solution of a third order polynomial is not an easy task. So I showed you the, the method developed by Cardano, Italian mathematician Cardano. And what did we do? We also developed a transformation where you can transform a third order general uh, equation into this special case and then solve it. Of course, there is more to this. It turns out that we can also solve fourth order equations. The way it goes, I'm not going to discuss it because it's kind of, it's, it would take me another hour, so I don't want to spend another hour on the equation. I guess I'm sure you understood the idea of what is the scientific approach to solving problems. So in that case, just let me briefly tell you what happens is that you try to solve a fourth order equation, you first transform into, again, a special case of fourth order equation by doing a similar transformation. That part is easy. Then when you attempt to solve the fourth order equation, it turns out that you have to solve a third order equation to obtain the solution of the fourth order equation. Okay? So you can reduce, in a sense, a fourth order equation to a third order polynomial and find the solutions as we did last week. We are going to upload those notes in our website. There was some problem in our IT department, but it has been resolved. Ahmed Kaplan will, will Mustafa Kaplan, not Ahmed. Ahmed Kaplan, OK. <laughs> Ahmed Kaplan will upload them. Uh, the problem was resolved yesterday. So you will see those, all those discussions we did. And when you wonder, how it was done, etc. it will be there. So today, we will start talking about linear algebra from the first basics. Who has never heard about matrices before? Is there anybody who did not take any matrix course or anything on matrices? So, so that, what I heard is correct then. In high school, there are, there are no more matrices, right? The matrices is not covered there. OK. So that's why we will take it from, from the very initial level, and we will build upon it. So it's not difficult. OK. Last week, of course, we talked about system of linear equations as a concept. OK. So what is a system of linear equation? And I gave you an example of system of linear equations. We used an electrical circuit. And we, we found a solution for electrical circuit using Kirchhoff's basics, Kirchhoff's uh, voltage laws and current laws and Ohm's law. And we found out that in order to solve, find the solution of an electrical circuit, what does it mean to find solution of electrical circuit, by the way? What is the aim of who would, who would answer me? What does it mean to find the solution of an electrical circuit? Yes. No, basically, 
what do we wonder about electrical circuits, right? What are the questions? We would like to know what are the currents and the voltages for each and every element, right? So what is the, how much current is flowing through each element and what is the voltage across every element? So solving this question, this is an electrical engineering problem, right? Solving this question, we showed it last week that it boils down to a system of linear equations. So you can go to in every subject of electrical engineering, computer engineering, civil engineering, basic sciences, wherever, okay? You will always face this system of linear equations. Some problems will be converted into system of linear equations. In today, in big data, artificial intelligence, we talk about system of equations where you have millions of equations at the same time that you need to solve, okay? You need to process and do things. All these processes are done using system of linear equations and matrices. So therefore, linear algebra is extremely nice and extremely simple, okay? There is nothing difficult about it. It's just from beginning to end, it's a very beautiful subject of mathematics and it is extremely useful for our, for, as, for engineers and scientists. So it's a, it's a very basic thing that you will always use and you will always get help from. So therefore, it's very important that you really give your heart and mind to this subject and learn it well. It will always help for you and it's, there, there is no difficulty in it. It's just from beginning to end, it's just a breeze. Everything about it is we just build it step by step, very simple and easy to understand. All you, all you need is just pay attention, and that's it. Okay. So, when we talk about equation, so, equation means 2x plus 5 equal to 0. This is, a, this is a linear equation, right? Equation. And how do we solve this? Just take 5 to the other side and change the sign and divide both sides by 2. So therefore, you have x equal to minus 5 over 2. So there is one unknown. And this is linear. Why is it linear? You don't have x squared or sine x and e to the power x or something else. Just a multiple of x. You don't have any other form of x. For, for example, if you had this, sine x plus x minus 3 equal to 0, this is not a linear equation, right? Not a linear equation. So how do you solve this? There is no general methodology. So linear case is a very, very, very special case. Nonlinear case means not linear, right? Anything other than linear equation is just nonlinear. And solving such an equation, which is, of course, necessary in many problems, we face nonlinear equations. And in another course, you will take linear, you will take numerical methods course there. Uh, we will teach you how to solve these kind of equations numerically. So, you, so what are we doing here? We are solving these uh, linear equations analytically, right? We are saying that this is the solution. But in this case, you just you have to f use some numerical techniques and somehow converge to the solution. So you do not you do not have a one shot solution. When you have analytic solution, it's just one such solution, right? You say x is equal to minus 5 over 2. In such a case, you don't have such an explicit analytic solution. You start from somewhere and use some iterative approaches, many different kinds of approaches we have, and you converge, hopefully, to the solution. So when you have, let's say, 2x plus 3y plus 5 equal to 0, 
and minus 3.5x plus 5y minus 1 equal to 0. Now you have a system of linear equations. You have two equations, which are this 1 and 2, and two unknowns. We call them x and y. So you have to find x and y that satisfy both of them at the same time. right? If I had just one equation and two unknowns, how many solutions could you have? How, how could you solve it? You could have infinitely many solutions. right? When you look at this on a plane, let's look at this equation. What does it mean? So how can we plot this? What does this represent? Let's plot this. So we take x equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, what is y? y is equal to minus 5 over 3, right? So x is equal to 0 minus, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, so minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. Etc. right? So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 5 over 3, which is about 1.6 something, right? So passes from here. And when y is equal to 0, x is equal to minus 5 over 2, which is 2 and a half. OK, so this is just a line, right? This is. 2x plus 3y plus 5 equal to 0. The geometrical representation of this equation in xy plane is a line. Okay. So any point, any point on this line satisfies this equation, right? That's what it means. So any point you take on this line will satisfy this equation, because that's how we draw it. OK, let's look at the second equation. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1 over 5. So this is 1 over 5, like 0 0.2, right? Passes from here. And when y is equal to 0, x is equal to minus 1 over 3 and a half. So it is like here. So this. is minus 3.5x plus 5y minus 1 is equal to 0. So we can look at these two equations as two lines, right? This is their geometry. So what is the solution of two system of linear equations? How do you represent that? Intersection. Intersection. Very good. What's your name? Mustafa, yes. So there is, see this point, all these points satisfy this. All these points satisfy this. And this is the only point that satisfies both of them, right? This is the only point that satisfies both equations. So the solution, so this is the solution for one solution, whatever it means, in the meaning that all the points that satisfy equation number one. This is the solution for two. And this is the this is the solution, right? This is the solution of this system of linear equation is the intersection of Two points. So you get the picture now, right? So what if they don't intersect? Is it possible that two lines do not intersect? Yes. So let's just let's look at an example. It says y plus two x is equal to two and 2y plus 
4x is equal to 4. Just We have equation number 1 here and number 2 here. Of course, now we cooked it up, right? We can see that this equation is just the same equation multiplied by, by 2. Okay, it's the same equation. But when you have a million equations, you, don't, you cannot see it. Even if you were to look at it, it would take you forever to go through them. And you, one of them could be the 20th equation, the other one could be the 576,111th equation. So there is no way you could catch it with your eyes, okay? But it is possible. So when you look at this, so when y is equal to 0, x is equal to 1, okay? When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2. And this is the same thing. So how many solutions does it have? Does it have? Infinitely many, right? It has infinitely many solutions. Meaning you can just take one of them as a parameter, and it's going to give you, uh, for every y that satisfies that, it will give you that. So as a matter of fact, here just you have basically one equation and two unknowns. So you have too many degree of freedom, right? So you could have something else. You could have, so this is infinitely many solutions. How about I have, let's say, I will just make it simple. 2x is equal to 1, 4x is equal to 1. So this is one equation, two equations, one unknown, right? So equation number one, equation number two. So in this case, this equation says that your x is equal to one over two, right? And this says x is equal to one over four. So which one do you believe? So that means this is too many equations, too few unknowns, right? You have more equations than unknowns. It's overdetermined. Can this happen? It can happen. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you. In, what happens is that, let's say I give you an electrical material, and I want you. Let's say I give you a, a resistor, and the question is, and you are going to have labs here on electrical circuits, and you're going to do me. The question is, please make some measurements and tell me what is the value of the resistance, right? So you make a table, okay, say that I know it. When I have a resistor, Okay, this is the relationship between current and the voltage. So what would you do as an engineer? You would just <coughs> form a simple circuit and just take one battery and connect, a resist connect the resistor you want to measure across this battery, okay? So it's going to be like this. So you will take, okay? So you will take a voltage source, okay, and the current will flow, and this is it. So in measurement, you always have measurement error, okay? Why is that? Why, why do you make errors? What is the reason, do you think? There is no perfect, perfect measurement. Like, there is no perfect voltmeter or ampere meter, right? You would always have an error in it. This is a part of our life as engineers. We live with errors. We live in, we design things. We know that they are imperfect. So we take care, we, ahead of time, we know that 
the resistance I am using is has this much of uh, quality. This is when I say this is five ohm. That means this has maybe five percent tolerance. So it could be five percent less or five percent more. It's a region. Or if I have a capacitor, the same thing. Sometimes the value of the uh, components will change by time because they age or they oxidized or because of the temperature. Many reasons, for many reasons, we as engineers, we learn to live with imperfections. What do we try to do? We try to do perfect things using the, all these imperfect components and the conditions. As engineers, we, we try to make sure that the computer we built will always work. Even if the voltage goes down or up or whatever, we try to make sure that we tolerate all those imperfections in our design, right? So therefore, when you are measuring, so what would you do here? Then you would take, you would just take a voltmeter here, right? You will measure this. You will see what is it showing, right? So you have, you say, okay, I have, I connected five volt battery here, and I measure two amperes, and uh, you make it 10 volts. But you, somebody else comes, the measurement he makes will be a bit different. Okay, so you will have, you will make maybe, so let's say five volt, two amperes, and seven volts, 2.5. 8 volts, 3, etc. So this will tell you, if you were to take this measurement only and do not make any more measurements, you will say, OK, this is, this is 2.5 ohms. You use this, then you say, OK, R is this. And this will, every one of them will give you a different result. So Shouldn't we just make just should we just make one measurement and close our eyes and say this is the result? Do you think would, would that make sense? Making more measurements would be do you think intuitively would be more useful or less useful? More useful, right? So making more measurements will give you will give you more information. So the idea is how do you make use of that information? So what you do in that case would be when you have something like this. You just, just let me just, since we are not just beginning the class, I will just give you a, just two sentences about it so you hear it, okay? So you have X and Y, X1, Y1, X2, Y2, Xn, Yn. So this is like voltage and current, okay? So when you, so you want to, Identify, let's say you have an error, okay? You define an error, left hand side and right hand side. The error should be what? When you subtract 2x from 2x minus 1, would be what? Okay, so you have y is equal to some f of x, right? So you would just take the errors for each point, then you would say, Let me not enter it too much. It's going to get you confused. We are going to get it. So you make this square. Let me just make this one. You would say 2x minus 1 square plus 4x minus 1 square. This is called total error. And you find the x that minimizes the total error, OK? So this is the best estimation that will satisfy two equations as much as possible, OK? As much as possible, it's going to satisfy them. This is called the least squares estimation of the solution. So when you have more equations than unknowns, you will always run into this. Sometimes you will not. We will, we will go through those cases. In that case, you try to find the least square estimation, the best fit that satisfies all equations as much as possible in the least square sense. OK. <coughs> Any questions so far?
And you will learn this in numerical methods. So as you see, all the courses are related to one another. So when you have system of equations like this, How do we solve it? Last week we talked about it. We will take one of the equations, solve one of the unknowns in terms of the other one, right? We will say here from second equation, 2y is equal to 2 plus x, y is equal to 1 plus 1 half x. And we will substitute that in the first equation. So we would say 2x plus 3, so this is 1 plus 1 half x, this is, of course, y, and this is equal to 1. And you just remove this parenthesis, 2x plus 3, plus 3 over 2x is equal to 1. Take 3 to the other side and combine this together, so this is 7 over 2x is equal to minus 2. From here, x is equal to minus 4 over, over 7. And then y is equal to then from here, y is equal to 1 plus 1 half minus 4 over 7. That means 1 minus 2 over 7. That means 5 over 7. Okay? So when you have three equations, Let's do also one example on three equations. So it's easy, right? It, you don't need any methodology. When you have two equations and two unknowns, you just solve one from one of the equations. It, you could start from here as well. It doesn't make any difference. OK? Let me just take this equation I wrote here. So 2x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 is equal to 1 minus x1 plus x2 plus 5x3. So let's take this 0. This is 2x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 is equal to 1. By the way, the best way to cook an equation is you first write this left-hand side. When you become a professor, just you will figure it out, but let me tell you. you first, then you say, I want x1 this to be this, x2 to be this, x3 to be this. You just substitute it, and you compute the right-hand size, right? So then you have beautiful numbers. If you just randomly write it, the solution will be 5 over 7, minus 4 over 7, things like this. So, so in this case, I know what is the solution, because that's how I computed the right-hand side, OK? <laughs> So it's not, it does, it's not the other way around. You write it and you try to find x1, x2, x3 that they are a nice solution. So this, this is how it goes. So what do we do? <coughs> we just spend a few minutes on it so we appreciate the, the methods we will develop, right? So let's, let's solve this. So I would take, for example, let's make, systemize this and say that, OK, we start from the last equation and solve the last unknowns in terms of the previous unknowns. So we say from here, x3 is equal to 1 minus x1 minus 2x2. Then substitute this. Substitute in the first two equations. So 2x1 plus 3x2 minus x3, 1 minus x1 minus 2x2. OK, this is x3 is equal to 0. Minus x1 plus x2 plus 5x3. So 1 minus x1, OK? So now we have x1s and x2s, and we have two equations, right? Let's just tidy this up. So this is like 2x1. How many x1s do I have here? 
two x one from here, right? One one more x one. This becomes three x one. Three x one x two, three x two, five x two. And minus one. Minus one, right? Minus one is equal to zero. How about here? X one minus x one minus five x one. It becomes minus six x one, right? When I make a mistake, please correct me. Okay? And x two, how many do you have? X two when minus minus ten x two, so minus nine x two. And what do I have here? Plus five equal to zero. Hmm? Fine. To two, right? So we have two here. So let's go to the one more. So what do what do we do now here? We should take this five minus one to the other side, it becomes five, then this becomes minus three. And what do we do now? Let's multiply this with minus one, right? Multiplying both sides of, of the equation with the same number, it doesn't change the equality. So equality remains. So let's solve again from, let's do what we did here for two by two. So nine x two is equal to three minus six x one. So x2 is equal to 1 over 3 minus 2 over 3 x1. If we substitute that here, what do we get? 3 x1 plus 5, 1 over 3 minus 2 over 3 x1 is equal to 1. So how many x1s do I have? 3 minus 10 over 3, x1, plus 5 over 3 is equal to 1. So this is minus 1 over 3, x1. And this goes to the other side. This becomes 1 minus 5 over 3, which is minus 2 over 3. So what is x1? x1 is equal to 2. Then what is x2? Yeah, 1 over 3 minus 2 over 3 times 2. So it is 1 over 3 over 4 over 3, which is minus 1. And you take this finally and substitute where? Here, right? So x3 is equal to 1 minus x1. x1 was 2. And minus 2 times x2. And x2 is minus 1. So that gives you 1 minus 2 plus 2, which is 1. So can I do this for 4 by 4? Sure. 1,000 by 1,000? Sure. But it would take me forever and I would make mistakes. Right? It is not also convenient for programming. It's not. It's kind of systematic, but it is, it is not uh, convenient to do this. OK? So, let's take another equation, okay? Where you have, let's say, 
3x1 minus x2 plus x3 is equal to 5. Then you have 2x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 1. And 5x3 is equal to 10. Okay? So you have here, the last equation has only x3. The second equation has only x2 and x3. And first equation has only x1 and x2. So this is a special case, right? This is the general case. This is a special case. So how can I solve this? Of course, I could start be dumb and just ignore everything else. And I could start, OK, let me first substitute this. And, but as, uh, with very little intelligence, you would figure that, OK, I should first solve x3 from the last one, right? Then you would say x3 is equal to 1 over 5. And you take this, substitute in the second one, then you say 2x2 plus 3 times 1 over 5, which is x3, is equal to 1. From here, you would solve 2x2 is equal to 1 minus 3 over 5, which is 2 over 5. Then you would take these two and substitute in the first one. Here, you would obtain 3x1 minus x2 is 2 over 5 plus x3 is 1 over 5 is equal to 5. This is x2, this is x3. Okay, 3x1. This would make minus 2 plus 1, so this is 1 over 5 is equal to 5. Take this to the other side. 3x1 is equal to 5 minus 1 over 5, which is 24 over 5. And x1 is equal to then 8 over 5. If you had 100 of these, or 1 million of these, and they are all in this ordered form, last equation has only one unknowns, and Second last one has only two unknowns, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You could very easily solve it, right? You should start. We call this back substitution. You start from the last equation, solve for the last unknowns, and substitute in the previous one, and solve the the previous unknown, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You just continue all the way, and you find the solution for all. Okay. So what is the scientific approach? How do we how can we transform a general form of system of linear equation into a form like this, right? How can I make some operations, simple operations, that I will obtain a new system of, starting from such a thing, I will obtain a new system of linear equations where both systems of linear equations are guaranteed to have the same solution, but solving this second one is very easy and straightforward. Okay, so scientific approach. So who invented this? Gauss. He is, they say, he is the greatest mathematician ever. But I say he is one of the greatest mathematicians ever. Okay, so there were very great mathematicians. Some of them in our world. Okay, there is. You should hear about this. One day I will. I will also show you one of some of his inventions, how he did it. There is Abu Rehan El Biruni from Central Asia. I recently read this book called Lost Enlightenment. It's written by Frederick Starr, an American. And in that book, he talks about the scientists in, in the Turkish world and Islamic world the contribution they made to science and technology. Of course, not today. Today we don't have many, as I explained last week. But in year 700, 800, 900, 1000, all those years, we had great scientists in the Eastern world, in China as well. But especially in Central Asia and in the Islamic world, we had great scientists. One of them is Abu Rehan El Biruni. This Frederick Starr says, he's not a Turkish or a Muslim, he says that Ebu Rehan el-Biruni 
is most probably the best scientist ever, not best mathematicians. He was a great mathematician as well, but probably he is the best and smartest scientist ever. So this is, so we have those great guys that we don't know about. For example, in what one of the inventions he did, and I will explain to you how he did it, he calculated the uh, radius of Earth. I think he calculated the radius of Earth with accuracy of 15 kilometer error. Okay, say it is 6,000 kilometer, 6,500 kilometer. He made an error only 13 kilometers, something like that. By making two measurements in year 1,000, so he was beyond the world is round or whatever. He already knew that. Okay, and he calculated it with this much of accuracy, and we know how he did it. So I'm going to explain to you his methodology. Another thing he said that. He, he was not a sailor, by the way. He was not a Navy man. He, didn't, he never sailed in the ocean. But he said that by studying the Earth and astronomy, I believe there should be a large land mass between Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Ocean. So he invented America like 500 years before America was invented. It was uh, found by Christoph Colomb. Okay, so about 500 years ago, without sailing to the sea, he did. Of course, I'm not saying this. American Frederick Starr is saying this. Okay, so it's written in that book. So science and technology, and your ability in science gives you things, enables you. To, to discover a landmass without even going there. Because he looked at the globe and he said, OK, we have this and that. And this is the radius of Earth. This is in the circumference. So how can you have all the landmasses here and there is nothing? There is no America. There has to be an America there, right? So he, may, he found out that there is an America in the missing place. OK. Before I go to and we. We tell you how to go from here to there. Of course, these are not the same. I'm not saying this equation has the same solution as this. But I just this I wrote this independent of this. Okay, just cook this here. So this is not. You, we did not transform this into this. I didn't do that. This is just another system of linear equation. So what is a matrix? Oh, this is chalk. Okay. If I use chalk, I'm gonna. I have a beautiful dress here. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> Matrix. So when you have this open, it just dries up. What is a matrix? So we wrote there 2x plus 3y is equal to 1 minus x plus 2y is equal to 2. Matrix is an array that we show with parentheses where we will have numbers in rows and columns okay this is called a row of a matrix okay row and this is column so this matrix we call it most of times capital letters this it's not a rule but this is like this is how we do it mostly a matrix is just you take a large parenthesis and you have the rows. And the, how many rows do we have here? We have two rows, right? This is row number one, row number one, row number two. This is column number one. This is column number two. So it has rows and columns. 
Okay. You know vector, of course. This is called a vector. You learned about vectors? Everybody, is there anybody who never heard about vector here? I'm not going to shame you. I mean, it's not your mistake. If you didn't hear, they didn't teach it to you, right? Everybody learned about vector because in physics courses you took, you have to have vector, right? Okay, so a vector is a special case of a matrix, right? Vector is just, this is called a column vector. It has two rows, okay? Sometimes in some applications or some scientists, they use row vectors. Doesn't make a difference, okay? So this is a special kind of a matrix. So we write this system of linear equation as multiplication of matrices and addition of matrices, etc. What we do is that here we take 2, 3, minus 1, 2 times x, y is equal to 1 and 2. We say that this matrix is multiplied with this vector, or this matrix is multiplied with this matrix, right? And the result is this matrix. Okay, in general form, system of linear equations are, so this is a vector, this is a vector, and this is a matrix, okay? So we say this is called the coefficient matrix, And this is the unknown vector. And this is the right hand side. So how do you multiply a matrix with a vector is that you take the first row and multiply with the column, okay? So 2x plus 3y is equal to 1. So it gives you the first equation. Okay, multiplication. So first row, this is a vector multiplication, right? First row multiplied by unknown. So it gives you 2x <coughs> plus 3y is equal to 1. Second row, similarly, will give you minus x plus 2y is equal to 2. Okay? Let's write now this one. So, you tell me I will write. So what is this? Two. Coefficient matrix. This is three. Like I'm writing here first equation. Two, three, minus one. Second one, minus one, one, five. One, two, one. Times x1 x2, x3 is equal to 0, 2, 1. The one I erased, can you please tell me what was it? Coefficient matrix. The, the one, the, the, this is 3 by 3 equation I had here. Anybody noted that? Okay, nobody took notes. Okay, good. So this is, let's say, 5, 3, 1, 0, minus 2, 2, 0, 0, 3. x1, x2, x3 is equal to minus 1, 1, 1. You see here, this is, this is coefficient matrix of this equation. These are two 
unrelated equation. They are not equivalent. So you have a special case equation here, right? Like x squared minus 4 equal to 0. So this is an easy to solve system of linear equation where you have below the diagonal is 0, right? All the numbers below this, this is called the diagonal, first diagonal, OK? This is called the second diagonal, OK? When you have all the entries below the first diagonal is 0, this is called upper triangular form. And this doesn't have a special form, right? So let's now pause for 10 minutes. And we will talk about how to go from here to there, for how to start from this form and go to that form, etc. OK? 10 minutes break. Thank you. Now, we observed in the previous class that when you have a special form of system of linear equations where the coefficient matrix is upper triangular, meaning all the coefficients below the diagonal is 0, solving such a system of linear equation is very easy. Right? The question comes, can we take a general form of system of linear equations and convert it into a special form? The answer is yes. And it's called Gaussian elimination. So great mathematician Gauss invented this. Of course, he invented many other things. Uh, he's an admirable person. And we are grateful <coughs> to him and other scientists for developing such methods. Okay? He developed this method called Gaussian elimination. So to tell you about what is Gaussian elimination, how to do it, I want to talk about some basic principles that we will all agree. For example, just systematically let me go over them. If you take an equation, let's say you have an equation 2x is equal to 6. If you multiply this equation, both sides, by the same number, c different from 0, does it change the solution of the equation? Does it change the value of x? So whatever is true for 2x equal to 6 is true for this one as well, right? So by multiplying both sides of the equation by the same number doesn't change the value of the equation. Of course, is the equation the same equation? No. It's a different equation, right? This is, this is let's say, I multiply this 5 and this is 5. That is 10x is equal to 30. OK? So this could, this could mean this is a circuit with uh, 20 ohm resistance and 30 volt voltage source, whatever. OK? So this could mean it is just 2 ohm and 6 volt, etc. So it could physically they could be they could correspond to something different, but their solution, the x that satisfies is the same, right? So that's what we care. Here we are developing a mathematical method to solve system of linear equation, to find the solution of system of linear equation. So we are allowed to do everything mathematically correct to find the solution, right? So it is not the same equation, but it has the same solution. So it's very important. So, so first observation is multiplying an equation, observation number one, multiplying both sides of an equation. by a number does not change the solution. The 
So this is this is first rule. Okay. So <coughs> of course this is number two. If you add let's say two x plus six, if I two is equal to zero, if is equal to six, if I add here a number, both sides any number, okay? It's I'm going to obtain a new equation, isn't it? For any c, see, even if c is equal to zero, so I have a new equation. This is a different equation, but what do I say about this? This equation and this equation has the same solution, right? Why? Right? This is how we solve it. You just take cancel. So by adding observation number two. If you add, add same quantity, let's say, okay, to both sides of an equation, the solution doesn't change. If you have a question, please ask. When you, yes, please. Yeah, that's observation, first observation. Does number change or not? Solution doesn't change. X will never change. You see, look at this. X is equal to 6 divided by 2. It's 3, right? X is equal to 30 divided by 10. It's 3. So X doesn't change. <coughs> Does not change. <laughs> Does not, of course. <laughs> yes. It's very important that you catch these things. Yes. Does not change. That's the idea. Does not. Okay. These are very basic, trivial observations. Yes. Infinity is not a number. Infinity is is something very mysterious. Maybe one day we talk about it. Okay, <laughs> infinity is not a number. Okay, there are infinitely many different kinds of infinities, right? So you have n square going to infinity. You have e to the n going to infinity. You have 1 over n factorial going to infinity as n goes to 0, say infinity, right? But they are all very different degrees of infinities, OK? It's beautiful, though. It's <laughs> again, yes. Good. Thanks for asking that. So that's, it clarifies that. So quantity, infinity is not a quantity. You cannot quantify it. Observation number three. So if you take two equations, let's say 2x plus 3y is equal to 8, minus x plus 6y is equal to 1. If I add these two equations, OK, let's say I add these two together, 1, 2, and I add these two together, I obtain x plus 9y is equal to 9, right? This equation has the same solution as these equations, right? So this is a different equation, but the solution of this is solution of this as well. How do I know that? Because you just, you are adding this, right? When you add this together, 2x plus 3y plus minus x plus 6y is equal to 8 plus 1. So this is this. 
So how do I know if these two are satisfied simultaneously? That means this is equal to 8. So this would cancel this. This would cancel. <coughs> and this is equal to 1. So this also would cancel. So it would satisfy. So this is satisfied. if these two are satisfied, this is also satisfied, right? So if these two are satisfied, that would also be satisfied. So you prove that at home, OK? Go over it. Make that exercise. If you take these two, and you will then tell me that if these two are satisfied, the solution will also satisfy the first one. Or if these two are satisfied, it will satisfy the second one as well. So these are any two of these as equivalent to the first equation, OK? So observation number two, three. Three is if you add two equations, and obtain a new equation, the new equation will have the same solution. In other words, we can look at this like this is three equations, two unknowns, right? You find out that when you solve it, you will have it is not overdetermined. So all these three equations are satisfied by, by just this same x and y. Okay? Okay. These are very simple and silly things, but this is all you need to solve our problem. If you take, let's say, let's take the same one, 2x plus 3y is equal to 8, and minus x plus 6y is equal to 1. This is a system of linear equation. If I take, interchange the equations, right, 6y is equal to 1, and 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. Obviously, these two systems of linear equation have the same solution. So when you interchange the rows observation, so there is no nothing complicated. Everything is so trivial, but so useful. Three. Interchanging the equations. does not change the solution. But sometimes this will be necessary. But when you look at the coefficient matrices, let's write this in matrix form. So what is this? Two, three, and what is this one? Anybody following? What should I write here? Minus one, six. This, x, y, right hand side. OK, how about this one? What should I write here? Minus one, Minus one six, two, three, x, y, right? That doesn't change. Here, one, eight. So coefficients changed, right? When you look at this. So these things, they matter when you have a million equations or 1,000 equations. All these very simple, say, OK, it's so simple that why is he talking about it? Yes, these simple things make up the complicated stuff. They 
lead to a very beautiful solution. Okay, that's what's good about it. So by changing, <coughs> of course, last class we saw two by two equation manually, right? The intermediate steps will change, isn't it? The numbers we deal with in, in, in the, so we will take, when you interchange the rows, you start from here, then you would say solve y in terms of x, and then substitute in the first one. So the numbers that we deal with would change, obviously, by changing even the uh, equation numbers. But the result will remain the same, obviously. Okay. Okay, this is again a very simple one. Let's say I have 3x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 is equal to 1 minus x1 plus 2x2 minus 5x3 and x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 1. Okay, what is the matrix form of this? It will be 3 minus 1, 2 minus 1, 2 minus 5, 1 1, 1, x1, x2, x3, 1, 0, 1. If I do the following and interchange x1 and x2, and I write it as follows, minus x2 plus 3x1 plus 2x3 is equal to 1, 2x2 minus x1 minus 5x3 is equal to 0, x2 plus x1 plus x3 is equal to 1. What am I going to have here? Minus 1, 3, 2, 2, minus 1, minus 5, 1, 1, 1. <coughs> x1, x2, x3 is equal to, uh, no, x2, x1, x3 equal to 0, 1, 1. What is the difference between these two? Hmm? First column and second column are interchanged, right? So this, you will face all of these things afterwards, okay? Does it change the solution? No. So when you change columns of a system of linear equation, you have to keep track of your unknowns. When you do that, that means if you exchange it nine column with the 27th column in your coefficient matrix, that means you interchange x9 with x27, okay? So in the new equation system of linear equations, now it's the unknown vectors, seventh row becomes, or ninth row becomes x27 and 27th row of the unknown vector becomes x, uh, whatever. You understood, you got it, right? So changing, so this is observation four. Interchanging. Columns. of a coefficient matrix matrix corresponds to to interchanging the corresponding unknowns. Like in this example. Okay? Yes? 
There is. Right one must be one zero one. So it's one zero, huh? Right. Equation didn't change, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Good. So you should follow. Yes. No, you cannot. You can ask in my office hour or during the break. But during the lecture, please, English, don't worry. So why didn't you change the base of the X and the hmm? Y? Why did we? The one and the R. Yep. Why didn't you change the base of the X and Y? You changed the equation. But here, I changed the order of the equations. So I changed first row of the matrix with the second row. And I changed this one. So when you change the rows, you change the right hand side. When you change the columns, you change the unknowns. Okay? Basically, when you look at the equations, everything is clear, isn't it? And just when you talk about the equations, then you you have it. Is it clear the answer? Did you understand it? Okay, good. Any other questions? Okay, what I said is this. I took this equation, this system of linear equations. I wrote it in matrix form. Do you agree with this one? So the first equation is 3x1 minus x2. Right? You're multiplying the first row with the unknown vector. You see this? Second row with the unknown vector. Obtain this one. And third row, you obtain this equation. Right? I said that if I change the order of the unknowns in my equation, okay, unknowns. So I put first took the same equation. I first wrote minus x2 plus 3x1, okay, 2x2 minus x1, x2 plus x1. So I just changed the order of them. I didn't make any changes in the equation, right? Does this change the equation at all? As far as a human is concerned, it doesn't matter. As far as a computer is concerned, everything changed, right? You have now a totally new matrix and <coughs> numbers change. It's just, as far as a computer is concerned, you have a new coefficient matrix, which is different from this. But there is a relationship. So by changing this order of the unknowns, which doesn't change anything, right? This doesn't need a proof. If x1, x2, x3 is, if this, a set of x1, x2, x3 is satisfying this and this and that, it will satisfy this and this and that, obviously, right? And vice versa. But the coefficient matrix is different here. So the reason why we made this observation is that when you change the order of the unknowns that corresponds to interchanging the columns of the coefficient matrix. So when you look at this coefficient matrix, this first column became here the second column, and second column became here the first column, just because we replaced the order of x2 and x1. You are probably confused because it is so simple. You're saying, that why is he writing these things, right? But these, these simple things matter, OK? This, so Gauss used these observations to come up with Gaussian elimination. Any other question? Please. I love these questions. Please continue. Why are we changing the order? Oh, why? That will come. So when you run into examples, you will see why we are changing the rows or columns. OK? So you will see that that is needed. Sometimes it is needed. Please remind me that before we leave today, in case I don't bring up an example like that, so that I make sure I give you an example. But I, if I don't want to give it to you now, because I want to complete my methodology. Another question. OK. So why is important? So why are you doing this? Right? OK. So that's all. Now we will talk about Gaussian elimination. So all these obs how many observations do we have? We have four observations. That's all.
Let's go back to the example we solved last class. Where is that one? So 2x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 is equal to 0. Minus x1 plus x2 plus 5x3 is equal to minus 3. x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 is equal to well, no, this is 2, this is 1. Okay? So Gaussian elimination is the following. You take a pivot equation. Okay, a pivot equation, pivot. And take appropriate multiples of that equation and subtract them from the other equations, okay? For example, what is the idea? We want to start from a matrix with everything, right? And we want to come to something that zero here and non-zero there, right? We want to transform a general form of equation into an upper triangular, an equation, a system of linear equation with coefficient matrix is upper triangular, okay? That's the idea, that's our aim. So what we do is that we take pivot equation in every step and use that equation to make some coefficient zero. So what we do is that we take this equation here, the first equation, first equation, always first, okay? Then when it's not first, when it's not possible, we'll go over it, you will tell me. We take this and we say that, let me take some multiple of this, add it to this, or some multiple of this, subtract, it's the same thing. Adding, uh, addition and subtraction is the same thing, okay? So let's take some multiple of this and add it to this. What would be that multiple? Huh? No. This, so I would show that the, the new equation I obtain here, so I will have new equation, system of linear equation will be 3x2 minus x3 is equal to 0, right? So I want to replace this with an equivalent equation with no x1. So what can I do? I will just, half of this, I will add it to this one, right? So this is, so then it becomes 2x1. So this one half times 2x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 minus x1 plus x2 plus 5x3, right? So let me write here is equal to 1 half times 0 plus 2. So I have in the observation, but this was the second observation, right? I have this equation. SubhanAllah. OK. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. <gülüyor> yani yaptığımız şeyin şeyine bakıyor musunuz? Ne kadar önemli bir iş yapıyoruz. Yer sarsıldı, değil mi? <gülüyor> It was a good one. It was at least six. It was. Okay. Let's continue. <gülüyor> So as engineers, we have to do, we have to build good buildings, okay? When this happens in Japan, it's just like a wind blowing, right? So we have to, okay. <laughs> so this was observation number two. When you add the same quantity to both sides of the equation, it doesn't change the equation, okay? So you have. So you have this equation, the second equation, minus x1 plus x2 plus 5x3 is equal to 2. So I took half of the first equation, right? 
and add it to the both sides of the equation. Do we agree that this equation is valid? Now, let me just clean this up. So what do you have here? X1 is, of course, obviously, why we did we select this one half so that there is no X1 in the second equation, isn't it? <laughs> Guys. <laughs> OK, so there is no X1. So what is this? X1, so 1 half times 2 plus 1 x1 and x2 is 1 half times 3 then x2 is what here plus 1 x2 and minus 1 half so plus, minus 1 half plus 5 x3 is equal to 2. So this is minus, minus, OK? This is 0, right? Equal to 0. And this is five over two x2 plus nine over two x3 is equal to 2. So let me write it here. So 2x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 is equal to 0. 5x2 plus 9 over 2x3 is equal to 2. Now what am I going to do to this third equation? What should I do? Five over two, of course. Five over two x two. So I'm not showing you view graphs, right? We are doing it together. So when you do some things with hand, uh, you will always make. That's why we use computers. So it's good that I make mistakes. You discover them, so you have to be awake, and you have to catch them. Okay. Okay. Now, so we. We took care of this one. Now, what do we want to do? We want to use the same pivot equation and take care of this one, right? So what am I going to do? What should I do? Minus half, one half times this is added to this one, right? So minus one half. Of course, when you do this systematically, I'm going to tell you this is now a, a semi Thing, okay, we are going to automize it. You cannot just say minus one half times. You should always do the same thing. We will say that coefficient of this is divided by this coefficient of this, and you obtain some number, and that number is multiplied with this coefficient and subtracted from this row. So we will automize it. But now we are building towards that. That's why what I am saying is not exactly 100%. Uh, Gaussian elimination, but it's 99.9% .9 Gaussian elimination. So bear with it. Okay. So one minus one half times two x plus three x two minus x three plus x one plus two x two plus x three is equal to one half times zero plus one. Okay, let me just shut this off. Everybody's wondering if, if you are okay, right? Did you also receive messages? So in the break, in 10 minutes, they find out. Okay, so what do we have here? Again, x1 will be zero, isn't it? So this will be minus one half times two plus one x1 plus 3 plus 2 x2 plus minus 1 half times minus 1 plus 1 x3 is equal to 1. 
So this is 0. This is 5x2. Is it 5x2? No. 3 over 2, right? Minus 3 over 2. Minus 3 over 2 plus 2. So that is 1 over 2x2 plus this is 1, 1, 2 x3 is equal to 1. So you have here 1 half x2 plus 2x3 is equal to 1. Yes? This should be 3 over 2. 3 over 2 3 over 2 x3. 3 over 2 x3. This? You are right. 3 over 2. Very good. Okay. You learned the trick, right? Now what do we do? X1, no more operation on X1. What do we do now? We have here X2 and X3, a new system of linear equations. So we do the same trick here. Now we take this as our second prevent equation. Okay, so what shall I do? Are we doing this for us or the computer? Computer. Computer, in this order. But I didn't do it exactly. I said, okay, we looked at it and it's like this. This is how Gauss did it. But now for computer, we will just write it. You take this, divide it by that, and uh, <coughs> multiply the first row with it and subtract it with whatever row. So we'll automize that for computer. Okay, what do we do here? So we take we take this over this, okay? One half over five over two. Okay, let's call this alpha. So what is what does this mean? One half times two over five. So one 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 over five. So we take one over five times this equation and subtract it from this equation, right? So we take 1 over 5, so we, this equation will remain the same, so we are playing now with this equation. 1 over 5 times 5 over 2 x2 plus 9 over 2 x3 is equal to plus <coughs> 1 over 2, so we say we will subtract, so we put it here, 1 half x2 plus 3 over 2 x3 is equal to minus 1 over 5 times 2 plus 1, right? When I say subtract, I should first write this and then write this, right? You will understand this. So I am, subtract means add minus of it to that. So as you see here, x2, so you have minus 1 over 2 x2 and you have plus 1 over 2 x2. So no x2, x2 evaporates. So you have minus 1 over 5 times 9 over 2 x3 plus 3 over 2 x3 is equal to, this is minus 2 over 5, so plus 3 over 5. And this is, if so multiply this by 5, so this is 15 minus 9, so 6 over, is it right? So this is 9 over 5 times 2, this is 3 over 2, so this is 15 and minus 9 is 6, right? 6 divided by 2 times 5, x3 is equal to 3 over 5, these 5's go away and you have x3 is equal to 6 over 6, which is 1. But this is not how computer does it, of course. Right? We now automize this. 
to automize it in computer use, we will use A, I, J, etc. We will use abstract notation. So you don't, we came, the result is that you have two, three, minus one, zero, five over two, nine over two, zero, zero, and this was, 6 over 10, right? 6 over 10. x1, x2, x3. And the other side is 0, 2, and 3 over 5. Okay, as you see now we have upper triangular coefficient matrix, right? Now we solve it. I was ahead of myself, so I, from this, what do we do now? We start from the last equation, like we did in the last lecture. We solve for x3 from the last equation, okay? We obtain one here. Then you substitute it here, okay? So this is one, this goes to the other side, so this becomes one half, this is one half, so x2 is equal to? Minus one. Minus one. And then you put here, this, this already, already did this, so here. Yeah, here. So we have here one, so nine over two, goes to the other side, minus nine over two, that means, let's do that, five over two, x two plus nine over two, x three, is equal to two. So you have here one, this goes to the other side. So 5 over 2 x2 is equal to 2 minus 9 over 2. That means 4 minus 9 over 2. That means 5 over 2 minus 5 over 2. That means x2 is equal to minus 1. So you put 1 here and minus 1 here. So it becomes minus 3 minus one, minus four, take it to the other side, it becomes plus four, x is x one is equal to two. Okay? Now let go and call your father and mother and your friends and come back in 10 minutes. Okay, we'll start at 2.25. Okay. So we'll use the dark color, black one looks, has the best visibility. Now, what we did is we, last class we made some observations and we said that multiplying an equation by a number, both sides of by a number, doesn't change the solution of the equation. This was observation number one. And we said that if you add the same quantity to both sides of the equation, the, equa the solution of the equation doesn't change. And we said if you change the order of the equations, the solution of the equation, system of equation, remains unchanged. And we also made an observation. We said that if you change the order of the unknowns, that corresponds to changing the columns, corresponding columns of the coefficient matrix. With these observations, we set out and solve a three by three system of linear equation, which we solved already by using a brute force back substitution method, okay? And we obtain the same solution. Of course, here, is there any question about it? Because we need to understand this. I first gave you a numerical example, okay? To make sure that you do not get lost with the abstractness of the matter. So that you see it with numbers. Is this clear? Yes. This one? Okay, let me go from the beginning. So I think it's good that we summarize the entire thing all together. Okay, we have three equations, okay? Equation number one, number two, number three. So these are 
three equations. We are looking for x1, x2, x3 that will satisfy all three of them. Okay? So, uh, this x1, x2, x3, this is called the solution of the system of linear equations. Okay? So we said that by using the observations we made, that I just summarized a minute ago, can we make some elementary operations on these equations so that we can convert this equation into a system of linear equation where the coefficient matrix is upper triangular. So it has all zeros below the diagonal. Okay. So we said, okay, let's do some operations and we said, okay, let's add one half of the first equation to the second one. So we use this as pivot equation. So our aim is to get rid of x1s in the second and third equations, right? I could do the following, but would, would this be okay? No, because I'm changing the equation. Like this, this equation doesn't have the same solution as the previous one. What was this? Minus x1 and x1, right? I have it here, okay. So you cannot just erase it. So you have to create a new system of linear equation which has the same solution as this one, but in this new system of linear equation, you don't have x1 in the second row, in the first column of the second row, and first column of the third row. That's the idea. So the question we are asking, let's take this as our pivot, okay? This is like, this is where we stand to do other things, okay? So this is pivot equation. You say, what multiple of this should be subtracted from this? This is the real Gauss elimination, Gaussian elimination method. So what should I, what multiple of this should be subtracted from this equation so that x1, there is no x1 in this equation? And we do that. What do we do for that? We say, okay, this over this. So this is minus 1 over 2 times this should be subtracted from this equation. Okay, this is what it corresponds to. Okay, one half times this pivot equation is added to the second equation, okay? And the result is that in the second equation becomes this. This is, let me call this two prime, okay? So this new second equation, instead of this, now we have this. Of course, we know that when you replace two with two prime, the new system of linear equations still has the same solution as the original one. That's the whole idea, right? It is not the same equation, system of, you know, it is a new system of linear equation that has the same solution. So the, please understand the difference. Okay, we are not saying it is the same system of linear equation. It is a new system of linear equation that is guaranteed to have the same solution as the original one. Now, after we take care of the second row, we come to the third row. We say, what multiple of the pivot equation I should subtract from this third equation so that there is no x1 in the third equation, right? So I did that here. So again, one, so the coefficient of this x1 divided by coefficient of x1 here, okay? Not the other ones, okay? Just, I'm just looking at the first coefficient. So one over two <coughs> times this should be subtracted from this equation, okay? Here it is. So minus one half times this, et cetera. And this becomes three prime is this, okay? So this becomes one half times x2 plus three over two times x3 is equal to one, okay? So I wrote it here. So I have, so did I bore you? <laughs> so I have here this first equation is the, our original equation, and the second equation, and the third equation. This is the, these are the new ones. So what are we going to do? Now we will play the same game, and we say that, okay, now I don't have any x1s here. Now I will take this as my second pivot equation, okay? And use this equation to make x2 zero here in the third equation, okay? So 
What do I do for that? Coefficient of this divided by coefficient of that. Let's say I call that alpha, okay? So I will multiply this with alpha, okay? Subtract it from this equation. Here it is. So this over this is just 1 over 5, so minus 1 over 5 times second equation plus the third equation itself, okay? And that gives you, so 6, so 3 over 5, um, 6 over 10, and this is 3 over 5, okay? So then, is it now clear? Okay, that was the idea. Now let's come to your question. Why do we interchange things, right? Yes. So if it was like this, so I don't have x1 in the first equation, okay? So this is of course a new system of linear equations. I'm, we are now talking about the new problem. If the problem I am dealing with was this, okay? So can I take the first equation as my pivot equation? As to sub so what should I do? I should do a simple operation. What could that be? Interchange. So I would check, I would, since if the coefficient of x1 in the first equation is zero, what I will do is, in algorithm is like that, you interchange first row and the second row. So in the matrix, you interchange first row and second row. That's it. Okay? Then you ask the same, same question. Is the coefficient of x1 non-zero? If it is not, then you interchange the first row with the third row. You go all the way and find out that you never find a coefficient of x1 that in any row that doesn't, is non-zero. Then what does that mean? That means there is no x1, <laughs> right? So x1, because if, if a column is totally zero, think of it like this. You have x1, x2, x3, right? So here, if this column is all zero, that means x2 disappears. There is no x2, right? So that means you have three equations in this case and two unknowns which are x2 and x3, or x1 and x3. Okay, here. Okay, if, if this was 0, 0, 0, like this. So this first equation would be minus x2 plus 2x3 equal to 1. 2x2 minus 5x3 is equal to 0. And so x2 plus x3 is equal to 1. So in, we have three equations, but we would not have any x1s in any one of them. So we would have two, three unknowns, two unknowns and three equations overdetermined. It, will not, it might not have a solution, or it might have infinitely many solutions. Okay? Now, is, is that clear? But why do we interchange columns? is something we will bring up later on. It will be useful afterwards. So changing the rows is a necessary part of Gaussian elimination method. Any other question? So it's very important to keep in mind that what we are doing is for computer. So there is no human being that will look at it. It should be such that we should make sure if something is zero and computer should be able to determine what needs to do, it needs to do, and your program should reflect that to be able to continue. It should run into a dead end. It should always reach a conclusion. So in general, we have
Okay, so you have n equations, n unknowns. Of course, it could be n equations, m unknowns as well. So we talk about that, but in general, you have uh, the proper system of linear equation would have same number of equations as same number of unknowns. But when it's not like that, we will talk about that. Okay? What does it mean? So in the matrix form, this is what it means: a11, a12, a13, a1n, a21, a22, a23, a2n. So this is the general system of linear equations. And this is how you write it in the matrix form. You call this A. You call this x. And you call this B. Then this is AX is equal to B. OK? In the most general form. So Gaussian elimination <coughs> algorithm. So we illustrated with examples. Now we are writing in the general form. Okay. Step one: form the following. matrix A and B put together, okay? Which is A11, A12, A13, A1N, B1, A21, A22, A23, A2N, B2, A and 1, A and 2, <coughs> B and. Okay. 2, so when you have A, I, J, A, I, J. This means I throw, so you come down, one, two, three, I, throw. J means J column, so you start counting, one, two, three, J, okay, that element. So this is, so I, row and jade column, okay? This is A, I, J, okay? Sometimes we use this uh, terminology to be able to abstractly write our algorithms, okay? A, I, J. So you say that take the first row as 
the first pivot equation. Okay. Then calculate the What should I say it? The ratio. Calculate alpha, okay? I'm gonna give it a name alpha. Calculate alpha for each row to multiply the pivot equation. with alpha for each row. Then let's say, multiply the pivot with alpha and subtract from the row, okay? Meaning, and the, this alpha is, alpha is for, for I throw for I throw alpha is a i one over a one one, and this is in the first step. Okay. So you take a two one over a one one for the second row, right? And multiply this first one with a two one over a one one, and subtract it from here. <coughs> okay. Let's do it again on the same example. I'm erasing this here so we can continue. I want to just go through every step in an abstract form so that you make the interconnection. So what was the equation we solved last class using Gaussian elimination? Can you tell me coefficients? Two, no, so just give me the coefficients. Two, three, minus one. And the right hand side? Zero. Zero, okay. Minus one, one, five, two. Okay. One, two, one, one. Okay. So this is A, B. Okay. So what is this? So I formed this. This is the first step. I did this. I put them side by side, right? Now, what is what is telling me is that multiply, calculate alpha for this row. What is alpha? Okay, minus one over two. Multiply this with minus one over two and subtract from here. Okay, so alpha is equal to minus one over two. This will become two, three. This remains the same. This is very easy to program. If you know a programming language, I'm not going to give you a programming exercise or homework because we don't assume that you know any programming language at this level, okay? But if you know any programming language, we should just easily program this. So minus one half times this. So this is, of course, this is going to be obvious this is going to be zero, right? That's the idea. So minus one half times this is minus one. Minus one minus minus one is zero. Then. 1 minus, so this is plus 3 half, so that becomes 5 over 2, like this. Let me just, so this, this computer, it's very easy for computer to do this. Minus 1 minus, minus 1 half times, this is alpha, times this. So this is, you are going to do all these computations when you are, in your, when you write a program. So this is going to be 1 plus Three half, so this is five over two. Okay, five over two, and this so five minus minus one half times minus one, which is minus 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 becomes minus. So five 
minus one half. This is nine over two, right? If I make a mistake, please correct me. Nine over two. And the right hand side, again, the same thing. Two, and since this is zero, so minus one half times zero, it is just two. It doesn't change. So this pivot that I calculated, I used it for the second row. And the only thing I used was the coefficient of t, x1 here. Now I come to the third row. What is my pivot now? Alpha, new alpha is equal to this over this, 1 over 2. OK? So what am I going to do now? This minus alpha times this. Of course, it is 0, right? That's how I selected it. But let's calculate it anyway. 1 minus 1 half times 2, which is 0. So this is 0. So in computer, you don't calculate this, right? It would, it would delay your program unnecessarily because that's how you, that's the, how you calculate alpha. So this is 2 minus 1 half times 3, so which is 2 minus 3 over 2, which is 1 over 2. And this 1 minus 1 half times minus 1, which is minus minus so it's 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 over 2, and this is 1. So I finished the first column. So I will go column by column. How many operations do I do? So in the first stage, I use the first row to take care of how many rooms? n minus 1 rows, OK? So I use, so we are going to do some computation now, how many operations, etc. So let's keep this in mind. So I calculate one pivot, and I subtract multiples of this from the other rows. How many times do I do that? n minus 1 times in the first stage. In the second stage, how many times? n minus 2 times, right? n minus 3 times, and then you have nothing else to do. Just have one element. Now, let's go. So after three, when you are dealing with jade row alpha is a j jade column alpha is a i j over a j j okay So I come here to the second column, right? So I say, now I need to make this 0. Of course, you could say, OK, why don't we make this 0? Yes, you could. But it will, be, it will not be useful, right? This, the idea is to make this an upper triangular matrix. The coefficient matrix should be an upper triangular matrix. So alpha is what? <coughs> what is alpha? 1 half over. 5 over 2. You just flip this over, right? So, so alpha is 1 over 5. This becomes 2, 3. This was minus 1, right? Minus 1. Minus 1. 0, nothing changes here. This also, second equation also will not change anymore. 5 over 2, 9 over 2, and 2. 
this is zero, this is zero necessarily, right? I don't, this is how I selected it. I'm not gonna do it again, but what is this now? This is three mi over two minus one over five times nine over two, which is three over two minus nine over 10. Multiply by five, so six over 10, okay? And the right hand side becomes one minus one five times two, which is one minus two over five, which is, did I make a mistake? Five minus two over five, which is three over five. So this is the end of for this example, this is the end of uh, forward elimination. We call this stage of Gaussian elimination is forward elimination. So you first make this, all these pivot operations to make all the coefficients below the diagonal equal to zero. Okay? Continue. I'm not writing this in very details, okay? You have it in your book, but it's in a very good form. I just want you to understand it here. Otherwise, I mean, the details of, in good English, it is written in your textbook. I can also post it in my website. Let's do that, okay? But I don't want to lose time here because uh, it's not the matter of writing it. I want you to understand it. Okay. Continue until you finish all columns and achieve an upper triangular form. After that, what is the last stage? Perform back substitution. Okay? Five. Use back substitution <coughs> and solve for xn, xn minus 1, and x1. See, in the reverse order, you first solve for xn, then xn minus 1, and in the end, you have x1. Okay? So let's do that for this example. So we use the Last one, so this is x, x3, x2, x1. So 6 over 10, x3 is equal to 3 over 5. That means x3 is equal to 2. Then you substitute it here, 5 over 2, x2 plus 9 over 2, x3 is equal to 2. That means 5 over 2, x2 plus 9 over 2 times 2 is 2, so 5 over 2 x2 is equal to, so I made a mistake. Where did I make? Huh? Excuse me? X3 must be 1. X3? Yes, 1, that's the reason, yes, I made a mistake. Okay. So 5 over 2, x2 is equal to 2 minus 9 over 2. That means so x2 is equal to minus 1. And you substitute that in the first one, 2x1 plus 3x2 minus 
x3 is equal to 0. So this is 1. This is minus 1. So this is minus 3 plus 1. So this is minus 2. It goes to the other side, so you have x1 is equal to minus 1. You have the solution already. And of course, if you run into a situation, so what, what could go wrong? Let's go over. Any questions so far? Any question on Gaussian elimination on so far what we did? Is everything clear? Yes? Uh, when we trans this station, Transform. Transform, yes. Uh, it will be, uh, we will be so, uh, solved. We will solve the solution yeah. of the transformed, a new system of linear equation. So what do we know? We know that the solution of this new system of linear equation is the solution of the original system of linear equation as well, right? Mm -hmm. So they have the same solution. So we don't need to, again, play back yeah. things like this. Okay. What could go wrong? Let me give you an example. I already talked about this, so if your friend asks me, why would you change? Why are you talking about changing rows and columns? One, if a1 was is 0, right? Then the algorithm would, should have a point that if you run into something that you cannot divide with, which is zero, then you interchange the rows. Okay, you change the number of the rows. So first equation becomes second equation. If you have the same, still have the same problem, third equation. So you continue until you find an equation that you can use as your pivot equation. If you are unable to find any pivot equation, you say that we do not have a solution for this. Period. So Gaussian elimination there would stop. Okay, it becomes subject matter for some other thing. We'll talk about that. Yes, you have a question? Yeah, okay. So, sometimes, let's, let's do another example and face a problem here quickly. Let's say I have 2, 3, minus 1, 0. I will take the same one. Minus 1, 1, 5, 2, minus 2, 2, 10, and 4. Okay? What did I do here? You realize that I just multiply the second row by 2 and put this as a, as a third equation, right? Of course, computer wouldn't know that. You wouldn't also know it if I didn't tell you, right? I mean, you are tired now. It is how many classes you took today, so you wouldn't realize it. But I just took the second equation, multiplied by 2, and obtained a new line of equation, OK? If I were to solve this, the first stage would be the same as here, 2, 3, minus 1, 0, and 0, 5 over 2, 9 over 2, and 2. And what would this be? So. This over this, what is that? Pivot, so alpha is minus 1. Times this, subtracted from this. So this would be 0. And this would be 2 minus, minus 1 times 3. And that would be 5. You can guess now, what will this be? 10 minus, minus 1 times Minus 1. So minus, minus, minus is minus, right? So this is 9. And this one will be 4 minus, minus 1 times. Oh, this will be the same still. This will be 4. It will not change. OK? So far, no problem.
Okay? So what do I do now? Go to the second stage. Now what is my alpha? Alpha is 5 over this, right? 5 over 5 over 2. Which is 2. This is twice this. Twice this is subtracted from this. What will you have? Huh. This is a Japanese friend of ambassador. <laughs> okay. So what will this be? 2, 3, minus 1, 0, 0, 5 over 2, 9 over 2, 2. This will be 0, 0, and this will be? Huh? 0, and this will be? 0. OK. So you have three equations, but it turns out that you have two equations in reality, right? One of them was not really an equation. It is just a repetition of the other equations. I could have added two other equations and put another one here, right? It would not mean there is another equation. And three unknowns. So can I determine a single solution, a unique solution for the system of linear equations? I cannot. But Gaussian elimination achieved its, it will say, that, okay, I finished it, and to come here, it will say that, okay, it will multiply zero times this and multiply from, but you will find out that the entire row is zero. So in your program, when you are programming, you should also put a check for this as well, right? Something else could have happened. I could have repeated the same row. Let's do that. And let's say what it's going to cause. Okay? So we are illustrating what could go wrong in different examples. Not wrong, I mean, but exceptions. Okay? Exceptions. These are called exceptions. You have the normal things and you have exceptions. Let's take, again, 2, 3, minus 1, 0. And you have here 4, 6, minus 2, 0. OK, and the third one is 1, 2, 1, and 1. OK? So this is A, and this is B. And x is hidden, right? A x is equal to b. Okay, let's. What is my alpha here? So this divided by this, right? Like like a computer, blindly. This divided by this. Unless this, we check this if this is different from zero. If yes, this divided so four over two which is 2, times this, subtracting from this. So what's going to happen? 2, 3, minus 1, 0. And this will be 0, and this will be 0, and this will be 0, and this is 0. Right? And then you have, of course, this. That's no problem. This is going to be 0, 1 half, 3 half, and 1. So. You will come here and you will say, OK, I want to use now, I want to make this 0, right? This is how a computer works. Say, OK, I want to this, take this as my second pivot equation. It will come here and say, OK, this is 0. So what is it going to do? It's going to interchange. Interchange. <coughs> because A2, 2 is 0. So 2, 3, minus 1, 0. 0, 1 half, 3 half, and 1. 0, 0, 0, 0. And then if it continue, of course, this is already 0. That's why you interchange, so you don't need to do that, right? Etc. Again, this is, again has infinitely many solutions. So this is, again, a degenerate case we are dealing with.
Any questions? Now, I want to talk about how many multiplications we do. We do not generally count additions because multiplication is much more costlier than additions. So this is called complexity of the algorithms. When you talk about, in computer science, when you talk about algorithms, what matters for us is what is the complexity of the algorithm, meaning how much computational load it will bring to you and to your computer, how much time it's going to take as the size of the problem grows, how does, how much time it's going to take, okay? For example, uh, you talk about solving system of linear equations. A more theoretical, theoretical way of solving system of linear equation involves determinants, okay? We will talk about it in a few weeks' time. When you use determinant methods, it takes, if the number of equations is n, the number of multiplications you need to do is like, grows like n factorial. And when you think about n factorial, for example, 100 factorial would be a greater number than all the sand and everything you have on Earth. If you were to count them one by one, it is such a huge number, okay? So it is it's a huge number we are talking about. So it becomes, it, that, what that means is that even to solve a system of linear equation which has 100 equations, you wouldn't be able to solve it with that algorithm, right? It wouldn't work. It would just be forbidding for you to do that. But using Gaussian elimination, how, what is the complexity of this? How much computation does it require? How would it grow? How many multiplications I would need to do? So we wonder about that, right? So we will calculate it. Yes? N squared? No, not N squared. <laughs> Close. But what we, so we will calculate it. We, it's not difficult, right? So let's, let's now go back. I will just... Let me just to remind you, you have A11, A12, A1n, B1, A21, A22, A2n, B2. So how many computations do I need? So what do I do? I first calculate my alpha, okay? That gives me one multiplication. Right? I divide this by this, so I do one multiplication. Division and multiplication, we assume they are the same, okay? So, and what do I do to take care of this row? I do n multiplications, right? n multiplications, but I don't do the first one because that's how I calculated my alpha, so therefore it's not n plus one, so it's calculating the, the alpha is one, and multiplying with these other ones, and you have this one here, B1, so it becomes an M plus 1 again, right? So how many of them are, am I going to do? How many rows? N rows, right? So N plus 1 multiplication, how, how many of them am I going to do? N minus 1 of them. N minus 1 of them I will do. Then in the second stage, how many of them I am going to do? N numbers. So this, wait a minute. This is N, not N plus, N. So you have N here and one here, N plus one. N plus, yeah, this is N plus one. Okay, N plus one times N minus, N minus one rows. In the second one, after I am done and all of these are zero, I will now start with this one, okay? This is an equation, again, the same thing. I have here n minus one equations and n minus one n columns. So I will calculate my pivot for each row and I will multiply each row by that pivot and subtract from this row, that row, that row. So how many, how many of them am I going to have? n times n minus 2. Uh, 
I will continue all the way when I have three times one, right? So I will, I have to calculate all these multiplication, okay? So from one to n, I need to calculate this summation. I, I worked it out. <clears throat> Let's go over it. That's a, that's a beautiful exercise. So, the summation I need to calculate is Okay, they just ignore the right hand side. In your books, I will just take the same as in your book, n, n minus one, n minus one, n minus two, two times one, okay? So n square, wait, wait, wait a minute, um, n minus 1. Square. n square minus n plus n minus 1 square minus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 square minus n minus 2 all the way you continue okay so you write it like n square minus n n minus 1 so you put here minus 1 n minus 1 so it becomes n minus 1 square n minus n minus 1 okay and you have then in that case you have n square plus n minus 1 square plus n minus 2 square plus 2 square plus 1 square minus n minus n minus 1 minus n minus 2 minus. Okay? So the complexity of Gaussian elimination is this. It is just a simple thing. So do we know how to calculate this? 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n. Do you remember this? What is the name? Who, who invented the, the summation of this? Gauss. Gauss, right? He was a very uh, noisy student, and his professor told him, like, you add the numbers from 1 to 100 to keep him busy. And after five seconds, he came back with the answer. The answer was, we just write this the other way around. And you see that you have m plus 1, and you have m plus 1, m plus 1. How many of them do you have? You have n times m plus 1. Of course, this is twice the sum of, you know, so you divide it by 2. So, so smart of the kid, right? So how do we add this? Any idea? Not Gauss. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is not gas. I don't know who did it, but this again called telescopic series. What you do is this. You take, so this is again a beautiful thing. I will take a few minutes of you. You just take k, k equal from 1 to n, k plus 1 cubed minus k cube, okay? You remember that when you have a cube plus b cube, what is this? 
How do you write this? A minus B. A, B plus B squared, isn't it? So you can, you can just verify this. Just multiply and, so. okay. So you can write this then. K equal from one to N. Uh, this minus this. K plus one minus K, what? K plus one minus K times A squared. So what is this? K plus one square plus K plus one times K plus K square. Okay? So this is K equal from one to N. This is just one. This is K plus one square plus K plus one times k plus k square. Okay, what is this? k square plus 2k plus 1 plus k square plus k plus k square, right? This is 3k square plus 3k plus 1. So this summation in one hand it is s is equal to k equal from 1 to n it's so beautiful. Look at this. Now it's it's magic. This three is equal to k equal from one to n, three k square plus three k plus one. Okay, so we can write it as three k equal from one to n k square plus three k equal from one to n and k plus k equal from one to n one. What is this? n. This 3 times n n plus 1 over 2. This we don't know. Now we come to this one. Let's write this out. So for k equal to 1, what is that? So k equal from 1 to n k plus 1 cube minus k cube is what? So this is 2 cube minus 1 cube, right? For k equal to 2, what is it? Please continue with me. This is for k equal to 2, this is, this is 3 cubed minus 2 cubed. Okay? For k equal to 4, this is 4 cubed minus 3 cubed. Continue like this. At the end, you have for n minus 1, this is n cubed minus n minus 1 cubed. And the last one, n plus 1 cubed minus n cubed. OK. You see this here? This cancels with this, right? What else? This cancels with this. This cancels with this. This, of course, cancels with this. All the way, everything cancels. What do you have? In the end, you have minus 1 plus n plus 1 cubed, right? Let me not make any mistakes. Yes. So when we talk about this, what is this equal to? Again, we use the same formula, m plus 1 minus 1, right? This cube minus this cube times this square, n plus 1 square plus n plus 1 plus 1. 
So this is n, n plus 1 squared plus n plus 1 plus 1. So we have the summation in this side. In the other side, we have summation of from 1 to n k squared, which we don't know. So what do we do? From here, we already know this. We take this to the other side. Okay, It will take me 10 more minutes. And you have the summation of k squared. So using this simple trick of telescopic sequence, okay, addition of a telescopic sequence, you very beautifully obtain the summation for k equal from 1 to n k squared. And that is, so please do this, complete this when you go home. 1 over 6 n n plus 1 to n plus 1. Okay? That's it. So complexity of Gaussian elimination is proportional to, this is 2, right? 2n plus 1. n cube over 3. So when you have 1 million equations and 1 million unknowns, that means the operations you will do is 1 million to the power 3, which is 10 to the 18, okay, divided by 3. So it is manageable. Okay? One million equations. Of course, you should have some respect for one million equations, right? You cannot just take it. This is very simple. So I will stop here today. I will see you next week. Do you have any questions before I conclude? See you next week then.